Okay, here is my um, color palette. I'll be using these paints in this pour, along with Wallach's uh, pouring medium, Floetrol, liquid wrench silicone spray in drops, and GAC 800, and water. Okay, so just to, I'll just mix one here to show you the proportions I'm going to do. And I'll start with the white. I've not used this uh, Artist Loft white before. I don't care about the bubbles. I'm just going to shake everything because I couldn't be bothered to, to uh, stir slowly. So I will torch out any bubbles that I get. Hope that's shaked enough. It's really shaken enough. It's really hard to shake this. Full. Okay, so I'm going to do about I'm going to do I think you need a bit more white if that's a thing, I don't know So about 50% I might have even been able to do less because I'm putting Floetrol and GAC 800 and then this I'll put just a little it's supposed to be like this GAC is supposed to be like 9 to 1 so I'm just gonna do about 1 ninth of that I might be adding too much, I don't know. The same amount of Floetrol. Just a little. Okay, so that's white. Then I'm gonna be back after I've mixed the other colors. I just wanted to show you. Actually, I'll mix this one because I'm gonna be putting water in it. Actually, I think all the other materials, yeah, that looks gross. Looks like cottage cheesy. I think I'm gonna need a lot more white in there because it was 50-50 pouring medium, but then when I added the other stuff, that makes it less than 50% paint. So I don't think we want that. Or well, maybe my paint wasn't fully. See, because I'm used to using the thick the thicker white paint too and now this is flow acrylic so I'm not I did I've never used the flow before so no wonder it's too liquidy oh that doesn't look good you know what I think I'm gonna okay so that's I'd say 75% paint now, probably. As I mix, I'm smushing against the sides like that to see if I can. Oops. So hard to remember to get everything in the camera frame. Oh, look at that chunky cottage cheese. That is so gross. white with pouring media like a already mixed white because this is weird looking oh it's lumpy and cottage cheesy maybe I'll fill that up for a dirty pour 
Oh, I don't know. That's horrible. Look at that. Ugh. Maybe this isn't mixed enough. Hopefully this is a bit better. Seeing as this is already very flowy, I'm just going to put a lot of that in. And how the hell am I going to mix that now? Just like this. Oh, see that? See how gross that looks? Ooh. I always need white though, so. half of what I did. Oop. There we go. I should really save the pouring medium for the thicker, my not soft body acrylics though, now that I think about it. Because the flow is already flow, so the white is already flow <sighs> thickness, so yeah, that's better. I'm going to put a bit more of this in now just because it should be nine to one and I just put a tiny amount before so what's about nine it's about that much shaking this up at this point. Boy, way to stay messy. I'm not that kind of artist that likes to get messy and likes all this kind of thing. I'm a very technical, realistic painter and this is like driving me a bit crazy. Alright, that's white. Okay, here are my colors. That's how much paint I have in each of them. I have just the, look, if you can see that, it's the tiniest bit of this liquid ink type. And just the tiniest bit of this yellow. I don't know if it's gonna be enough, but maybe I'll put a bit more of this. And I'm gonna add the medium too, and then the tiniest amount of this liquid, look how liquid it is. Tiniest amount, you see? It's like a centimeter. And then the Van Dyke Brown is about a tablespoon in there. And then I'm gonna take this pouring medium just to show you how much I put in. I don't know how this is gonna go, but it's about equal. teeny bit amount of this in each one. Okay. I'm just going to put just a tiny bit in the heavy body one. And that one. Hopefully that doesn't make it too thin or whatever. Let's see. I don't have enough room to work. I don't care about air bubbles. I'd rather torch them out. I couldn't have the patience if I tried to sit here and stir paint for an hour. It's just, I don't know. I can't do it. Okay, so 
some water can go in that one. This is very thin, but there's not much of it either. And I plan on dripping, like I kind of want to add some as I go to. I don't know how I'm going to approach this. Like two pours or make two dirty pours. Because I already have a composition in my mind that I want to do. It involves Sahara and elephants, let's say. Well, that's very, <laughs> very watery. Hmm, I wonder if I should... Put a little more pouring medium in that. I still don't have it straight in my head exactly what each of these things does to the paint, uh, scientifically, if you know what I mean. You know, if it's... Yeah, that still looks really nice. It's very luminous, too, with the Liquitex ink. Don't need water in that one. This is, wow, that's beautiful. Look at that. I love this color. It's pretty liquidy too. Let's see about this brown. Got to warm it up with a bit of red. It's a good suggestion from Anne Marie, so and I'll just put a little bit of this red, this reddish orange ink in there. Just one dropper full because this is pretty pigmented. So whoa. Oh man, that's pretty red. Did I put too much? Yes, I did. A little brown. Because I want it pretty dark. But a little warmer on the red side. If you're going to take any tips about pouring, one should listen to Anne Marie, right? Of course, it's way too thick now. Right? needs water. Where's my water? Here's my water. I think it's too warm. I don't really like it this warm. Could add some whatever. It's chocolate. I wanted it dark chocolate, but it's pretty chocolatey. Okay, I can't be bothered to mix anymore. <laughs> it's all dirty. Okay, I'm going to spray the canvas. Just to help the flow. Alright, I almost forgot the silicone spray. One. Two. Three. Oh, I can't be bothered with that.
two spritzes one in there and then the white doesn't have any in it what should I do with that just leave it no silicone in it oh, I don't know I'm gonna make one cup with white in there so this has no silicone this will have one two three big sprays okay I think this one needs another one okay <laughs> all right it in but not too much this one needs there's a lot in there I don't like breathing that in I just needed another one All right, let's get to pouring, the fun part. I'm making this canvas pretty dirty, hmm? Oh, that's such bad practice. Okay, let's pour. Silicone white. yellow, light yellow, light, I'm not even thinking about this, I'm just doing it. Okay, I still got lots of brown left. Something about that I don't like. It looks too mixed. You know what I mean? Alright. Water again. Ugh! Seriously? Let's do this. It's gonna go all over. to escape pet hair. Okay, let's do this. Oh, whoa. I didn't want, <laughs> I thought it was thicker, so I thought it wouldn't shoot. I mean, I didn't think it would shoot out like that. <laughs> okay, let's do this. I had some more of this. I want 
it a hill. So let's see if I can create some contrast. That's just sinking, you see that? second pour because I want I want a hill like this that's what I want actually so let's oh, really? I just sprayed some silicone in the corner there I'm just gonna put some of this red in the brown just drop it in like this. Kind of like a mini dirty pour kind of thing. Then I want I think when this dries, I'll just paint a dark brown glaze over that because I want a hill. Because I'm going to do some more art painting on top of this sort of background. So that looks pretty cool up there. I just want this darker. Why not just go for it? that yellow does is mix oh oh <laughs> not mixed properly okay I'll work with that I'll work with that can work with this oh no crap all my nice dark brown is gone again so annoying of control is so frustrating. Look at that right through the canvas. Okay. Just some brown. I need a new cup. I think I can do it in yellow maybe. No, I don't want yellow in that. 
Okay, I want no silicone in this one. Now I don't want cells. I want it darker. I don't want a chunk either, <laughs> like last time. Just dark. Oh, I should be blowing this. That's what I should be doing. Get out the straw. That's what I want to do. So you have to be careful when you blow it because the bottom comes up through it and then I lose my brown. Okay, it's getting browner. like a creature. Okay, well that gave me some dark brown down there, so I'm liking it. Looks pretty cool. Very earth tony. Something not right though, I'm gonna keep going. Like all this I like this movement I think this white is ruining it I don't know if that's the opaque white or what the white without the silicone Ok, 
Okay, I like it like that, so I'm going to put it down. It's level over here. Some Yupo fun. I can get this just to go in the middle. I don't want to touch it too much. So I just go on to play with this paint after my painting was done and I just played in the Yupo and I made about three or four of these paintings on Yupo but I didn't film them all so I tend to play with it after I've stopped filming and I just did that last night too. So here are some other shots and I'm just going to show you um, I didn't get to record all of this um, but I, I put them on the Yupo and you'll get to see some of them so um, and then eventually at the end I kept dip because I didn't want to waste all the paint left on the table so I went and got some tiles and I dipped three tiles and those ended up looking really good so I'll just let you watch the footage of that now so in this one here I just ended up putting a lot of acrylic ink that thin ink um, over just the drippings that were left on my uh, place there and dip the Yupo in and I got some good pictures of these um, the final Yupo pieces of paper didn't end up looking that great but when you take pictures of them and then manipulate them digitally they can look gorgeous so you take sections of them or you know just use your artistic eye and crop out sections that look really good you know you've got the basics of design you got your focal point and your contrast and you know you just have to use your artist's eye and crop them nicely and I ended up doing that um, and cropping them into circles is my favorite medium um, like frame to put them in and um, and then I did a compilation of sort of planet looking digital art out of the pictures of these uh, I changed the colors in um, digitally uh, enhance things, enhance the contrast, frame them nicely, and you can go watch my I'm Arting video for um, a lot of these those dips of the planets that I did were what I'm doing right here, and it looks quite ugly on the actual Yupo papers. Like if I were to show you this, these pieces of paper, the paintings don't look great, but if you can photo photograph them well, and if you, you know, I'm trained in digital arts and I'm quite proficient on the computer, so I make them look really good digitally and frame them nicely and they look really cool. So all is not lost if, um, if you're just playing and you make mud. If you've got some nice contrast, just bring them digitally and, and sort of enhance them there. So a lot of the planets that you see in the I'm arting video if you go watch that are what I'm doing right here so I just wanted you to know that uh, that's possible okay so speaking about what I'm actually doing right here with this rusty yellowy mess um, the colors are really quite ugly so I'm just right now I'm playing around with the materials I was just spritzing on I believe 75% uh, alcohol there uh, maybe not though because then I just torched it and that might have gone up in flames so I don't want to I don't think it was actually never mind that um, now I'm putting on the acrylic inks again and I'm just trying to get a little contrast in there and seeing what happens when I swipe so I can't remember it might have been soap maybe that I was spraying on there I'm so sorry I don't remember um, here's another shot where um, it's still wet here and I took it in digitally and it looks a lot better. Again, this one I don't like the colors, so I just went in digitally and changed the colors. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put at the end of this video, I'm going to put a couple of the um, manipulated in images that I did so you can see that um, how I did it exactly. Here's yet another one. Uh, there's some parts of this one I like and there's other parts I don't like. Um, for instance, that little bloom part on the on the bottom I just really really like and if you crop that out it looks a lot better
So here I got a little bit of footage of me, um, another one of those Yupo ones, and I'm just blowing with a straw, uh, pushing it around. I really like that the thin Liquitex ink made it look kind of like a burning fire sort of thing. Um, and then I'm just playing around with it with my finger. Um, so I really just played around with uh, five or six pieces of Yupo, and I just didn't film them all because I just didn't have that enough room on my iPad, I guess. Um, but I wanted to get a little bit of footage because of all the cool pictures that I turned them into at the end. But um, So I really love this bloom part at the bottom. It's not cells, it's texture, so the spray paint, silicone first, then spray paint, gives you webbing if you're lucky, but texture like this if you're kind of not lucky, but it still looks kind of cool. So at the end of all this, I laid this out on the garbage bag and I just spritzed it with a bunch of stuff and I have a plan for this. I'm going to do a painting. Look at this. This is just sprayed on to the garbage bag and um, hopefully I can I don't think it'll peel off but I'm just going to use the garbage bag plastic I'm going to cut it out where you will soon find out what it's going to be okay so these are the last things I did um, I got lots of pores out of this night so check this out oh the light in here is so bad here is, uh, hopefully you can see that, it's like golds and the composition is supposed to be like this. <laughs> so, sorry about the lighting. And then I did this one. These are on tiles, I just whipped these out and stuck the tiles in the mess and look at how beautiful they are. This is gold and seafoam green and lime green and my white. And the yellow that was left over from the first painting. And this is another gold green and so you can see it shining there. Gold, green, white, and blue. Oh, the lighting's so bad. I'm sorry. There, you can see it a bit better like that. I really like working on these tiles. They're small and easy to hold. I love it. So... There's the three I did. You could see those colors now a bit better, like that. Okay, here's the finished first piece. You gotta pause it to see it because I lost the red rest of the footage, but that's what it looks like dried. I know a lot of people like to see that. Then here are um, some footage of my tiles in some pretty good light. I really love the way they turned out. So, maybe I'll put some images in here of the uh, planets. Okay, so here are those um, planets with the round crop that I told you I'd post. I changed these paintings that I just did into digital art. And that's my garden moon. And this is uh, my pink moon. And I called this my Juicy Moons series because I had quite a few of them. And I post them on my Instagram, which is Andy with an I, A-N-D-I, designer. So you can go follow me there to keep up with my art if you'd like. And just feel free to watch the rest of these images. This really reminds me of a Japanese painting with that little blossom there in the corner. That's my vampire moon, for obvious reasons. And this, I see an old woman in that, and I, I want to paint that. I want to 
do a digital painting and paint on it. This one, Illuminati confirmed. Can you see the eye of God in the middle of there? that painting and then the last one is called gold digger so yeah those are my uh, paintings I'm digital paintings I made out of my physical painting so I really hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching if you liked it please give me a thumbs up and ring my bell baby have a good one everyone